So I'm going to talk, it's going to be a short talk. Um, so I'm going to talk about getting Salon, star, getting Salon working on the Android platform and writing a, uh, an Android app in Salon. Um, to recap, Sol Salon is a, is a relatively new programming language which features um, a powerful and, you know, we think um, very elegant static type system. Um, it's a type system that um, is flexible, but that is rather fussy, so it finds uh, more bugs at compile time or when you're editing your code in an IDE. Um, it has built-in modularity, um, which is very important. Um, it has support for multiple for execution on multiple virtual machine platforms, the JVM, Android, um, JavaScript, Dart. Um, that's important. Um, it, it, you know, um, the language is defined in a way that it's not specific. Um, it doesn't have constructs that are specific to any of those virtual machines, and instead has um, is is defined so that so that the constructs which it does have make sense across a wide variety of, um, of virtual machines. You can drop down and write code that is specific to a particular virtual machine platform, um, but that is. Um, but, but you know when you're doing that, okay? You can't do it by mistake. Um, Salon features, you know, powerful interoperation with, those la with, with other languages on those platforms, with, with Java when you're running on the JVM, with JavaScript when you're running on a JavaScript VM, with Dart when you're running on the Dart VM. Um, it has excellent tooling. Um, our CLI, our command line tools are, are excellent. Um, we have plugins for Eclipse, IntelliJ, and the, the IntelliJ plugin also works on Android Studio. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about modularity in Salon, not because um, in this talk I'm going to be able to make a whole lot of you know, great use of it, um, but rather because um, um, it almost sort of gets in the way um, when, when we're using Android. So, um, you know, generally, you know, I, I, in, under most circumstances, modularity is one of the, is one of the you know, really you know, wonderful you know, selling features or whatever of Salon. Um, what it offers is, you know, language level constructs rather than, you know, kind of build system level constructs for defining modules, expressing dependencies between modules, you know, saying my module I'm writing depends upon these other modules I'm getting from somewhere else, um, and for controlling visibility between program elements in modules. Um, so I can have, for example, a, a, a private package within a module that's not visible to, to other um, modules that depend upon my module, things like that. Um, it provides versioning. This is rather important, okay? I, I depend upon a, a certain version of a module, and then um, at assembly time, I can override that version and say I'm actually depending on, upon a different version of, of, of the module. Um, that's one of the things which is sadly, you know, from what I've seen still missing with, um, with the jigsaw stuff in Java 9 um, is, is versioning. Um, <clears throat> It features um, um, a whole system of, of module archives and module repositories. Um, you know, so when I compile some code with Salon, it doesn't produce um, class, uh, uh, class files on a, uh, in, in a directory. It produces a, a, a .car file, which is a sort of a, 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 sort of a jar um, with some additional metadata um, in a well-defined module repository. So a module repository is something like a, like a you know, a little bit like a Maven repo, something like that. Um, and because all the tooling for the language understands what these module archives are, what the mod what module repositories are, um, you know, the compiler, the runtime, the, the IDE all have the ability to automatically fetch dependencies from, from, within, repos from within the repositories they know about, um, going all the way to Salon Herd, which is the central community uh, module repository. Um, it features um, module isolation at runtime, so I can have multiple versions of the same module within my running um, um, program. However, I will say that this depends somewhat upon um, um, what platform we're running on, okay? Um, Salon does have its, you know, does have its, um, its own module runtime, which provides that module isolation, and in certain um, situations, for example, if I'm deploying um, my program as a fat jar or as 
um, or on jigsaw, then I lose that, that module isolation. Um, and then I would only be restricted to having one version of a module at a time in my program. Um, the module system features interoperation with both Maven and with NPM. I can import a module directly from Maven um, just, by, just by naming the Maven, um, the Maven module I'm using in my module descriptor and then, um, and then I'll be able to use it. Well, if it's Maven, it's going to be Java. Um, I can use it within my, um, it, it, its classes within my Solon program. Um, likewise with NPM when I'm running on, on, JavaScript, on, on, on a JavaScript VM. Um, finally, um, what's the you know what's the thing we've been working on a lot, quite a lot recently, and, and is actually you know super cool, is the notion of assemblies, uh, an assembler tool. So an assembler tool, so assembly is the process of taking a module and its dependencies and packaging them up into a single archive, which is a, which is a you, you know my whole program packaged up and and, and executable. Um, so there are assembler tools for. First of all, something for a, a, new, a new format that we've just, you know, that we've just um, come up with called an, a Salon Assembly Archive. Um, it's a .cas file, so that's essentially a, um, you know, a, a, a zip, um, an archive containing all the module archives inside it. So you know, sort of Russian doll packaging, whatever you like. Um, a, you know, along with all the bits you need to, you need to be able to run that, um, that. Um, that assembly, so including the, the module runtime, yada, yada, yada. There are also assemblies for JavaScript. There's also um, assembly archives for JavaScript. Um, so essentially, actually, actually, a better way to describe it is an assembly archive is essentially a zipped up um, a module repository along with, um, along with the extra things that are needed to run um, the, the program. Um, we, but there are, there are additional assembler tools, okay? So, 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 uh, so assembling your program as a salon assembly archive isn't the only option. We can assemble it as a fat jar, all right, which is, you know, kind of great. It lets you just, you know, it's just, a, it just, you know, repackages all the classes out of the module and all its dependencies into a single, um, a single .jar file and you run it using Java minus jar. Um, we can reassemble our, our module as a WAR, so that basically, you know, repackages the module as a dependencies as a, as a WAR for execution on, on Java EE, um, we could repackage it for execution of Wildfly Swarm. Um, so that Wildfly Swarm is like a is like a um, a fat jar that contains a Java EE environment together with your program. Um, we can repackage it as a jigsaw. We can assemble the program as a jigsaw mlib directory, so you can run it on jigsaw um, as a Maven repo, so that you know you can you can. Um, easily, you know, use the module from from within a, 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 a build that's using Maven, um, or you can assemble it as a Dart as a Dart assembly. So, so there's a bunch of different options there, depending upon what is the runtime environment you're targeting. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a pro, yeah, it's going to be a, a serverless application, serverless application, right? With Solana, um, I measure. Um, I, I guess with I guess with the Wildfly Swarm option, I guess with Solana Swarm, that's the name of the tool, Solana Swarm, blah blah blah. You've got you got a bit more, you know, you got a bit more options because it's you're writing a, you know, I, I guess a you know whatever kind of Java EE app that you know that Wildfly Swarm would support. Yeah, with 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 Salon War. I, I mean, you're producing a War. I mean, anything you can do in a War. I mean, you know, it could have VJBs or or, or anything like that. In it, I guess you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So all that's kind of all that's the the web.xml is kind of is kind of um, aggregated in there by the by the assembly tool. All right. So what you what you get is ju you just get a War, right? And then you can throw that at your um, at your, um, yeah, your um, servlet engine, app server, whatever it is, right? Um, there's no, there's no equivalent salon ear command if you want to package an ear or something, but I don't, I haven't seen any desire in the community for that at all. But, but certainly, you know, salon wire is useful. Um, okay, so. Today we're going to talk about Android, and, and the question is, you know, what do I, you know, why, why, why is that even interesting? Um, you know, I've already kind of alluded to the fact that the modularity aspect of Salon is is a lot less useful in this environment, and we'll come to why in a second. 
Um, but you know, what, why would I use Solana on Android, and, and what would I get? Um, um, you know, first of all, look, this is a lot. More, this is a language which is much more type safe. Is is is, is you know. Um, Really, a lot more, you know, uh, fussy is the word that come to mind. But I mean, you know, meticulous about checking, about checking the types of things and checking that what your that, that your code um, is sound. Um, and, and so, in general, we detect many more errors at, at compile time. Um, and, and we're going to, you know, through the talk, we'll see that you know one of the one of the major classes of errors that we're we're going to see is 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 errors relating to null, which is um, you know, and I think, you know, I'm going to clarify what I mean about that in a second. Um, you also get um, anonymous functions. So, uh, you know, um, Android, as far as I understand, it still doesn't support um, um, Java 8. So, um, you know, if you want to be able to use, um, um, you know, uh, pro if you want to program with first class functions, um, you know, that's, that's something you'll get with, with Salon. Um, Salon offers a very pow some very powerful facilities for processing streams. Um, you know, we have a we have a a, 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 um, a a stream, a notion of a stream that was designed, you know, kind of separately, um, you know, and before before Java Streams API. So it's it's a little bit different to Java Streams API, um, and it's um, I don't want to say it's it's not better and it's not worse. It's a little bit different. It can do some things that the Java Streams API can't do, and it can do and and it can't do so. You know, and there's a couple of things that that it can't do that Java Streams API can do. Can uh, does do, um, but it's I think overall much more you know more convenient to use than Java Streams API, um, and it's enhanced by the notion of comprehension. So um, you know when people think of uh, processing you know streams in in most languages, they're thinking about using these operations you know these famous operations like melt, filter, reduce, um, and um, they can be great you know often. Um, but, but there are quite a lot of cases where um, it's actually more, um, I, I find it nicer to use um, a syntactic construct called comprehensions, okay? So a comprehension is, you know, the syntax derives from, from mathematics, from a set, the set constructor, you know, um, syntax in mathematics, where you say, you know, basically, you know, for all x's in some set, you know, um, such that some, um, some condition, um, you know, and, and so and so comprehensions let you do, you know, iteration. I mean, iteration not exactly. This is more declarative than that, but 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 let you select from some um, some set of things, um, some stream of things. They let you transform the values. They let you filter the values in, in a way that's a little bit more um, that, that, that's that's actually significantly more flexible than what you get with um, um, you know filter map fold because. You know, with filter map fold, when you're selecting from multiple sources, multiple streams, you kind of have to think about how to package things up into tuples, and 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 it gets a little, it can get, you know, and that's possible, but it's, but it's, but you know, often it turns out to be a little bit cleaner with comprehensions. Um, you know, the great, wonderful thing about about Salon, which you know, um, I think the community, uh, you know, is totally overlooked, um, but other newer languages that are coming out aren't aren't overlooking it, and and are, um, you know. And are picking up on stuff, things like TypeScript, um, um, union intersection types um, for, you know, really, really change the way you write code, really make um, a language with static typing, especially an object oriented language with static typing, much more, much more flexible and really um, result in, you know, a type system that's more understandable, that gives you more understandable errors that, that, um, that is easier to reason about. Um, you'll get tuples, okay? Tuples are, I, I don't use them, I don't, I try not to overuse them, I don't use them, you know, all the time, but there are times when it's, when it's, when it's nice and useful to have um, tuples in the language. Um, you get type inference, um, and you get flow sensitive typing. Flow sensitive typing is um, the idea that if I test the type of some reference to a value, then um, the act of testing of, the, of that reference will also narrow. So, so, you know, in Java, you very often say, if foo is an instance of bar, then, you know, bar, bar equals typecast, and, and, and that's, you know, verbose. It's, it's, um, it's kind of silly, um, and, and, it's, uh, and it's also, you know, kind of 
kind of bug prone, right? It's, you know, I replace this, you know, I have to use a, 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 a typecast, which is not, you know, which is not really, you know, protected by the compiler, which, which, which can fail at runtime. So, um, so flow sensitive typing um, um, says that if, you know, if I test the type of something and I know that, that foo is a bar, then, um, then the compiler is not going to throw away that information. It's going to remember that information and let me use foo as a, as, as a bar within the, within the scope of where I've done that test. Um, and, and, and it turns out this is, this is something we use all the time, especially since, um, you know, combined with, with, with null safety, you know, it's, it's especially important in this, in this, in this um, um, context when I, when I have something which might be null, I need to check that it's, that it's not null and, and, and keep using it. Yeah, yeah, when I have, right, exactly. When I have these constructs like union types and null, and, and, uh, and um, it's, just, it's just really, it's just a, a really important thing that goes hand in hand. Um, you know, you have much better support for, for programming with, um, with immutable objects and with um, immutable collections in Salon. Um, that may or may not be, it's unclear to me how much relevance that is, has to Android developers, but certainly I imagine there are, there are some Android developers who um, care a lot about, uh, about, you know, a more, you know, functional style of programming with, with immutable um, um, things. Um, for example, you know, Salon's language module, uh, you know, um, offers things like, uh, like immutable sequences and tuples and, and and, and basically everything, everything in there except for one container type are, are immutable. Um, values in Salon are by default immutable. If you want them to be, if you want to assign to something, you have to explicitly declare it variable. Um, and, and overall, you know, it turns out that naturally you just wind up using, um, using immutable things and, uh, and, and using, you know, a lot more and using things like variables and, and mutable. Um, collections a lot less, um, and it turns out that you don't, you don't actually lose much by doing that. Um, um, you also get, you know, a, you know, a syntax which which allows for, you know, a rather streamlined definition of, you know, model or data classes, um, you know, uh, classes which just package together a few a few values, a thing we use for our domain model or something like that. Um, <clears throat> All right, so that, that's just a brief, you know, uh, you know, there should be enough there that, that you guys can see that this is, this is something that makes sense. There is something, you know, there is enough there that, that you know, you might, you might want to, you know, consider it. Okay, so the challenge for me was, you know, as a total novice, complete, utter novice to Android um, development, I wanted to port um, a non-trivial Android app, which is this universal music player um, from Google, um, which, is a, which is a little... I mean, it's not huge, and it, but it's also not tiny. Um, from Java to Salon, um, so it, it's sufficiently large that you know it was a good test of real-world usability of my tooling, of my of my language. Um, you know, it, it, it exercises enough Android APIs. It's not just using you know the the most basic things. Um, um, you know, and obviously I wanted to use Android Studio um, with the Salon IDE plugin. Um, this is. You know, I, I use IntelliJ with the with the plugin all the time, but um, you know, Android Studio is is, is not exactly IntelliJ, um, and so I wanted to see how well that worked in practice. In practice, I found a couple of bugs, um, and to make this as realistic as possible, I did an an, an unholy rush. All right, so I was really didn't have much time to dedicate to this task. Um, the first hurdle you run into when trying to use Salon for, um, for, for um, Android development is Gradle. Um, so, you know, the most natural one, you know, when you're starting on a small project kind of, kind of way to use Salon is that, is that you just want to use the, the Salon compiler on itself. You just compile things with, with the IDE or with Salon, you know, compile, Salon run. Um, so the, the compiler has dependency resolution and management you know, including Maven, Interop, all that stuff as part of, as part of the module system. It's all built in. So there's no, you know, the, the thing that people kind of use build scripts for is just, I mean, it's not, it's barely even, I mean, I mean, I mean it's not even, it's not even really, really important. Um, you know, all your dependencies are defined there in, in your module descriptor for your module. Now, on the other hand, you know, so that, that, that's great, but, but in the world of Android, um, Android is extremely dependent on the use of Gradle. 
for dependency management. Um, you know, you run a great old build that phew, expands R assemblies into jars, generates these R.java files, fetches, bit, fetches bits and pieces of the SDK from all kinds of locations. Um, it runs DEX, which is a which is a you know a post compilation phase, uh, and and Android wants these all these dependencies defined in build.gradle, and and you know, um, you know I, skipped, I was like, well, you know, so these dependencies are ultimately aren't they aren't they Maven modules anyway? Why, why can't I just you know, list you know get Salon to fetch them for me? And, and and you know Steph corrected me and he said, no no no, it's not it's not that easy. So they're all over the place. They're they're not really. They're just not really, you know, they're not jars there, and, and, and there's no, there's essentially no way to get away from the use of Gradle um, if you're trying to do Android development. Um, so the solution is um, the Salon Gradle plugin for Android, okay? So this integrates the Salon compiler with Android's build process, right? Um, and yeah. So we'll have a look, you know, to set it up, um, you know, requires a little bit of boilerplate, right? So you have, um, so, I mean, there's minimal boilerplate there, or I basically, right, well, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit, something a little bit extra, but basically, basically it's, it's here, what you, what you need to set up. Um, here's where we, um, where we set up the both the basic Salon plugin for Gradle, and then the Gradle plugin for Android. Okay. Then I'm going to list my dependencies as normal, as I normally would, as excuse me, as normal for Gradle. Okay, as I normally would for Android. Um, here, um, and then. I set up Salon here, um, I'm going to name the model, module I'm compiling, uh, I'm going to give it a path to Salon because I'm using, um, I'm using like a snapshot build of Salon. Um, this ordinarily wouldn't be necessary if, if, if Salon's on the, it's installed on the path as usual. Um, I set this to true, um, let me explain what, what that is. So what is it? And that's, that's basically, I mean, yeah, that, that's basically it. So, so, that's a, so that's just a bit of boilerplate, you know, that, that you would just basically come and look at this example app and, and copy, all right? Um, took me a bit of fiddling to get it right, but essentially it's not. It, essentially it's just, it's just pretty, pretty basic. Um, so, so, what does this, so what does this plugin do? Well, what it does is that it lets Gradle fetch all the um, the jar archives that are that that, that are needed um, for your Android app, and then it aggregates them together, Cradle build, great, um, into a standard Salon module repository layout. All right, which means that then from Salon I can import those um, those modules um, in my module descriptor here. So you can see that you know here I have this this duplication, right? Over here I'm naming these these modules for, for Gradle to be able to fetch them, and then over here I have to uh, I'm importing them from the this this Salon module repository that they're being copied into by the by the Gradle plugin. So so you know look guys I hate this, right? This is awful, all right? Having to name my dependencies in two places is 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 really terrible, all right? And you know change a version of something, you got to change it in two places and blah, 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 blah. Um, what can I say? I mean, it's, it sucks, but, um, you know, it, it's, the, it's the only way, right? Um, I even, you know, I even found that, you know, typically, usually, you know, when you, when you use this plugin, when you use the, you know, it's actually, it's actually using a Salon tool, which is called, you know, Salon import jars, you know, and we import, we import the jars into a, into a module repository. I even found that, you know, because the, the Android stuff comes with, you know, bro some broken metadata. I mean, you can even see the broken metadata here, like tripping up IntelliJ. Um, I mean, it's just giving, IntelliJ is just giving me nonsense errors. Um, or Android Studio, I should say. I mean, these errors are, are, are rubbish. Um, you know, so, so Salon was complaining, so I had to just say, you know, oh, force imports true, stop doing that kind of, the kind of validation that it, that it usually does. 
Um, and that's, uh, what can I say? I mean, it's just like a pretty fragile, the whole, the whole build and, and run system of Android is just pretty fragile, is, is my conclusion. Um, so, um, you know, one, one last point here on this is that, you know, the, 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 the Gradle plugin's pretty good. Um, you know, it supports mixing of, you know, things like mixing of Solana and Java code in a single module and, and all the things you, um, you would expect. Um, so, you know, the integration with, with Gradle, you know, the solution works, but, you know, I don't love it. Um, copying files around makes the build process even a bit slower than it already is. You know, how much that matters, I don't know, given how slow the, the build process is to begin with. Um, you know, what I would say about that is, you know, if you're using Android, you want a language which finds as many possible bugs up front as possible because, because, because building and, 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 and testing, it, it's like so slow. Um, you know, I have to express my module dependencies twice, as we've seen. You know, on the other hand, okay, overall, it's a pretty robust solution, okay? And if we tried any, to do anything smarter, we would probably end up with something really fragile that would break between Android releases, and we'd probably be in, with a, in for a world of pain. So I think, you know, ultimately, this is the best we can probably, about the best we can probably do there. Um, all right, so how did I go about, you know, so, so okay. So I set up this, this, this build, you know, now I, you know, I have a bunch of Java code that I'm building instead of a bunch of Salon code, all right, and, and, and it was working, right? Now, you know, my next step was obviously to, you know, port most of these Java classes, you know, I left a couple in just to show that, just to show that we can still mix Java and Salon, um, you know, to, 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 to port all this code to, to Salon, right? Um, and how did I do that? I mean, there was a fair, there's a, there's a, a decent amount of code there, guys, it's not, you know, it's not a huge app, but it's, you know, it's, it's something. Um, so the answer is that um, the IDE has a function called paste Java Salon. So I, you know, I can, you know, I basically just select some Java code. I go over to a Salon file and then um, it's edit paste Java Salon and um, it very slowly, um, tra you know, tries to transform that, that Java code to, into Salon code. And, and you know what, it, it works really well. Um, it does most, you know, 90% of the work of, of translating between the two languages. You know, the languages are sufficiently similar that, you know, this translation can be, be reasonably, you know, automated and, and give you something sensible at the end. Um, and this process of, of incrementally pasting uh, is, also, is also reasonable. Um, since, the, since the Salon compiler allows, you know, a module to be written in a mix of Salon and Java code, um, I can do it bit by bit and, and try to keep the, to keep the app working all the way along, along the process, right? So I go, you know, kind of one class at a time or one, you know, whatever it is at a time. Um, and, and, and so that works, okay? So where's the pain? The first source of pain is that our IntelliJ plugin, and this is, not, um, and this is a, a limitation specifically the plugin, doesn't yet make Salon declarations visible to Java source in the same module. If they're in different modules, okay, then I can certainly have a, um, have a, jo have a Java, you know, have Java code that depends upon Salon code, um, and that's no problem. But if they're there in the same module, um, um, IntelliJ can't make that connection. Now, the code actually compiles and runs fine, okay? It's just that we get these annoying red errors highlighted in the Java code. And that makes this incremental process a little, you know, a little uncomfortable. Um, so we either kind of ignore the red errors, which is what, you know, frankly, what in practice I actually did. Um, or we try to, you know, and we try as, mu as much as possible to translate incrementally bottom up, right? So we start with the model, and then we go to things a bit above the model, and then we go to the UI at last. And, and so we kind of try to keep it so that, so that there's a, as much as possible we, we have, um, Sorry, that's nonsense. No, I mean top down. <laughs> Sorry, translate incrementally top down. Um, so, so, so we have, you know, sorry. So we start with the with the UI, so that so that so that salon declarations are depending upon Java declarations rather than the other way. I, I was stupid and went bottom up, and so I had to deal with these red errors, right? Um, um, you know, the other option is we could we could separate things into two modules, but I, I didn't bother to do that. 
Um, the second source of pain with the rewrite is really the handling of, of null. Okay, so let me, you know, um, so what I mean by this, you know, lots of Java fields of, you know, if I have a Java class, it's very common that the, that the fields of that, of that, you know, class are, are implicitly initialized to null, okay? Um, but it's rather hard to mechanically for the, for the, for, the, for, you know, the salon to, you know, past, past Java salon tool, it's very hard to mechanically distinguish which of those fields are implicitly null and which aren't, right? which are actually initialized within a constructor or whatever. Um, the problem's exacerbated by some nasty patterns that are used in the Java world, which shouldn't be used probably, where instead of initialization being done in a constructor, initialization is done a little bit later in some sort of, you know, callback method on create or, you know, initialize or after or something, right? Um, and, and there are some Java, there are some, you know, Android APIs which work like this, okay? So in this case, you know, you have this field which, which is actually, you know, in principle non-null, because, but because its, its initialization is delayed until after the constructor, and, and it's done in some magical method that, you know, has some life cycle that we don't, that, you know, Pace Java Salon can't, can't really tell anything about. Um, you know, it's awfully hard for Pace Java to, uh, Salon to distinguish, you know, which of these fields are really null. Um, and so basically, you know, it kind of does the best it can, but, you know, really most of the time it just goes, all right, you know, this field's an unknown. Um, and so then I have to come by, um, you know, mechanically and, and, and fix that, all right? Um, so I want to get a little bit deeper into this problem. Um, so. When I talk about null safety, I don't just mean that my language has nullable and not nullable types, okay? To me, that's the, you know, that's like a 10% solution. That's like the crap way, all right? Um, so, so to see what I'm really talking about, we, we go come to this, this idea that in Java, null is the default value for an uninitialized field. It's even worse in primitives where it gets initialized to zero or whatever, but let's, let's set that aside, okay? Um, you know, um, so, so, so things are, are by default initialized to, to null, and, and Java doesn't even, doesn't do anything, do any work at all to present, prevent access to uninitialized fields. Not even if you declare them final, okay? So you can see, you can see, you know, the value, you know, this null value, all right? Now, now, if, 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 if Salon were, you know, would follow this same approach, and, and you know, there's, there's some other languages, like, you know, floating around at the moment that, I, that do, you know, that also, that do follow this approach and, and claim to be null safe, and, and, and I would argue that, that that's, you know, a misunderstanding. Um, if Salon were to follow this approach, then these nulls of these unofficialized, uninitialized fields could leak out into, um, into values and, 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 and method return types, which are non-null, and thus resulting in, you know, unsoundness in the type system, okay? And then we could get, you know, the same problem of null pointer exceptions far from, far from the point of, uh, of the bug where, where a null was assigned to something that's, that, that's not supposed to be null. Um, and, and so, you know, the, this problem of null safety is as much about, uh, is as much about initialization logic as, as about anything else. So in Salon, in order to preserve the soundness of the type system, where null can't be assigned to um, a, 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 a something that's not null, something that's declared not null, um, we actually have some pretty heavy-handed um, compile time validation of your initialization logic in a class or, or whatever it is. Okay. So the compiler actually looks at your initialization, the, the type checker looks at, looks at how you've initialized your field and prevents you from accessing the fields of your own class in a way which would, um, which would expose an uninitialized value of a field. Um, now, this is a hard problem, right? And it's, and, um, you know, the best we could do, the, um, which, is, which is pretty good, um, is too heavy-handed, right? So it has too many false, um, false positives, right? Too many cases which it'll reject, which are not actually bugs. In particular, it can't handle circular references, 
right? So there's no way to set up circular references, a, a circular reference between two objects um, in a way that the compiler can see that that is safe, okay? So what we have is we have an annotation called late, which marks um, a field as being initialized later. Um, and the behavior of that is that if I access a late field, that, that, that I'll suppress the compile time checks on, on, on ensuring that it's not accessed before it's initialized. But if I do at runtime access it before it's initialized, I'll get an immediate error at runtime, okay? That's still better than a null pointer exception far from the point of, of access of the uninitialized field. Um, anyway, so I know those, that went a little bit deep. So, you know, um, the point of all that is that, you know, the translation to Java in lo involved lots of manual intervention but divide between all, decide between all these cases. So, the field really is nullable, I, I need to look at the code and decide. So if the field really is nullable, I need to declare its type, you know, maybe whatever, maybe type, okay? Um, uh, if the field can be definitely initialized in the initializer or constructor of the class, well, I don't need to do that, you know, um, then, it's, then I'm okay. Um, if the field really is initialized just once, but in an on create type method, so late, then, I, then what, I've, what, I what I'm doing is using the late annotation, okay? And, you know, note that in any one of these cases, the field might be variable, in which case I need to annotate the variable. So there was, there was a, this was, without question, the most, the most difficulty that was, those who were involved in the rewrite was, was really understanding really was, what was the initialization mo mo model of this Java class. Uh, and that's because, you know what, I mean, Java kind of encourages you to play a bit fast and loose with that stuff, and, and, and that's a source of bugs in Java. Um, Uninitialized fields are, are, are a real source of bugs. Um, and, you know, uh, so all this was sufficiently tricky that I actually screwed up a, top, a couple of times. And when I ran the app, I got, uh, you know, initialization errors and, and you know, ouch. But, but they were better than tracking down null pointer exceptions. Um, um, I would say that these were basically the only problems I, you know, the only bugs I encountered at runtime except for one, which I'll mention later. Um, you know, it is completely usual and completely normal in Salon that the compiler finds my bugs as soon as I type them. Um, you know, there was one class with such complex initialization logic that, you know, I really had to struggle a bit to come up with something <coughs> the compiler would accept. Um, what can I say? Um, you know, I'm just, just wondering which, which class that would have been. Show you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, so you know, you, you can kind of see, you know, you can kind of see the kind of things I end up with. You know, I have, you know, all these fields which are set up, which are initialized actually in the uh, where they initialized um, in this this on create method here, right? Um, and so I have to mark them all late. Uh, you know, I mean, in a way, this late annotation is the, you know, kind of go back to what I would go back to what I would have with Java, sort of, sort of, um, you know. Um. Yeah. Look, if I, if I, you know, if I could, I mean, okay, I need to be a bit careful here. I'm copying Google's code. All right. Perhaps there's a way to write this class that doesn't involve doing the initialization in the on, on create. I don't know. I didn't, you know, try to try to figure that out. Okay, maybe there is a way. But the way the way the, the code I was working on worked was was to do the initialization of all these things here in this. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff here, right? That there is, is being initialized, right? In this in this on create method. And, you know, whereas it would be far more natural in Salon to do this sort of initialization in the initializer, in the constructor, or whatever, okay? Um, if, if we were initializing those, you know, right here in the initializer, you know, all I would have here is, you know, value music provider equals blah, 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 right? Um, if, I were doing it, if I were doing it in a constructor, I would just have music provider that, right? So, um, you know, I had to annotate these late to suppress, you know, to allow that initialization to happen you know, later down the track. You know, on the other hand, there's other examples. Um, uh, interested in that one. Um, 
you know, there's other examples like this where what we really have is something which really does start out null and really is variable, okay? Um, you know, and, and, and if you look, we look at the Java code, it's hard to tell this case from, from these cases we were just looking at, right? They look the same in Java, okay? But, the, you know, in this case, you know, once you, once you carefully look at, oh, I lost it. Yeah, once, once you carefully look at how the thing's used in the Java code, you realize, oh, this is actually a, you know, this is actually something which is assigned and reassigned and can be null in between, okay? Um, Um, another thing, another thing I changed, another thing that took me a little bit of time is that, you know, it's extremely common in Java to have a local variable, which is, you know, which we kind of say, oh, set it to something, then if something, set it to something else, then if something else, set it to something else, where we have a local variable that's assigned and reassigned. Um, you know, and Paste Java with Salon handles that perfectly well. It just annotates the thing variable because it can see it's being assigned. But that's kind of bad style. And so I felt like I should eliminate all those, all those uses of variable and rewrite the code slightly, and, and uh, it turns out cleaner to do that. Um, <clears throat> something I found was extremely common in, in um, uh, in this, in at least this, this Android code was lots of switches over integer constants. Now this was a real surprise to me that, you know, in 2017 we have stuff like this, right? Um, this really surprised me. I thought that we wouldn't still have stuff like this given that Java has had enum since 1.4. Um, and so that came as a surprise. And, um, and Salon in 1.3.2 doesn't actually allow you to switch over integer constants like that um, because they're not guaranteed to be disjoint. So in order to let myself write code like this and make the, make the translation easier, um, because there's quite a lot of places that were doing this, um, I, you know, I kind of I got bored, bored rewriting switch cases and I'll see if so I, what I did was I, degraded, I downgraded um, a compiler error to a warning. So you can see that without this suppress warnings here, it says, you know, case refers to a constant value. So, you know, these are not provably, these, these things, these cases here are not provably disjoint, okay? But, you know, I, and I suppressed that warning. So I've used that in quite a few places in the code um, to let me, just, just to make the translation easier. Um, so now we can switch on integer constants. We're always able to switch on integer literals because the compiler can prove that those are disjoint. Um, so as promised, I was able to use anonymous functions. Okay, I was able to make use of you know anonymous functions um, in a couple of places. However, this turned out to be. I was a little bit disappointed to see that this was um, less useful than I had expected because. Quite a number of Android's callback types are, are abstract classes instead of they're not instead of um, single abstract method interfaces. Okay, so the, so the Sam classes, or in fact, they're classes with a bunch with several abstract methods. Okay, um, so you know, which is to say that Android's um, the Android's APIs aren't really set up either for Java, for for Salon, or for Java nine. Um, and that even when Java 9 comes, they're going to get a lot less value out of, out of anonymous functions than perhaps people are, are expecting. Um, so I was wound up, you know, using um, our version of anonymous classes, um, which are a little bit different to Java's, um, instead of lambdas. Um, I have opened an issue to request that we add support for using, for conversion of anonymous functions to single abstract method classes, um, specifically for use for Android development. Another problem I ran into was something that I pulled my hair out for about a whole day over, which was um, 
that when I was translating the code, I changed a, which one was it? Where was I? Ah, oh, damn, I don't remember quite where it was. No, I don't remember which one it was. Anyway, there is, a, there is an API in Android which accepts a single abstract method interfa uh, interface. And so I used an anonymous function and I thought everything was great. And there's another place where, anyway. It turns out that the identity of that thing matters and that the identity of the single abstract method object I was supposed to be passing in was supposed to be the actual class that was, that had something that was using this thing and, um, and this introduced a bug, right? And I wasted a serious amount of time over that. Um, I know I think the API was terrible and I think it was even more terrible that it was utterly undocumented, the, 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 the um, the semantics of this of this thing, but you know, it happens. Um, the sample app doesn't use, do a whole lot of interesting stream or collection pro processing. You know, I did use, you know, a couple of trivial, you know, I did do a couple of trivial things. I'm not sure if I can find them here. Um, uh, I think one was, you know, you can kind of see. Oh, you know, I used a comprehension here. You know, whoop de do right? But you know, this this class became a lot simpler than the than the Java than the Java class was a lot simpler. Um, you know, or um, there's another one where there's some. Uh, I think I find it. You know, I'm using, you know, some stream processing functions. See here and somewhere else here. Find, you know. Mm. I mean, it simplified the code a little bit. You know, it's certainly certainly nicer than what the previous Java code was doing. Java, you know, pre-Java eight code was doing. Um, but there wasn't there wasn't much in the app for me to really be able to point to and say, hey, look, this is amazing. Um, for now, I didn't bother to port the code to use Salon's collection types in Salon dot collection. So I just le left it using Java Util collections, right? Um, because they work fine. You can use. There's no reason. There's no reason writing Salon to avoid using Java collections. They they work absolutely perfectly fine in Salon. And you know, unless I would have wanted some particular feature, um, I just didn't have enough motivation. Okay, here's a here's a here's a here's a one. So the. Java language itself doesn't support null safety, but a number of Java libraries offer nullable, not null, non-null, et cetera, et cetera, annotations, okay, which you can use to, to try and introduce some null safety into your Java code, okay? I particularly love them. I love everyone who uses these on their APIs, okay, because the Salon compiler can look at them, and when it's assigning a type to these things, you know, from the point of view of the Salon, of the Salon code, it will see that these things are either nullable or not null and can assign the correct Salon type as, you know, maybe foo or foo, right? If it doesn't have one of these annotations, then it kind of, then, then, the, then the compiler realizes it doesn't know and it kind of mark the method or field as, well, all this might be null and I'm going to have to insert some runtime type check. And, and you know, Salon makes sure that that null doesn't creep out, doesn't leak out and cause unsoundness in your Salon code, but, you know, it's not as good as, as having it really be, you know, truly type safe at the, at the point of interface between the languages. Now, Android has a nullable annotation, and I thought, perfect, great. But unfortunately, it's declared retention source. And I don't understand that at all. It's crazy. It seems, it seems utterly nuts to me. So it's absolutely useless to us. And that was really disappointing, because some of their APIs do, 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 um, do specify those. So, um, you know, oh, I, forgot to, um, I forgot to show you, you know, so let's see what the app looks like, you know. Oh, what happened here? Suddenly the font got really big. Oh, when we changed, um, when I changed screen mode. <laughs> um, let me uh, let me restart. <laughs> so you can see, uh, um, we can run on the Android emulator. So you know, my my conclusions of all this process were, you know. 
I'm, ha I'm, I'm actually really happy with the end result. Um, the code is significantly cleaner. It's significantly more type safe. I know that, you know, you know, my, my, you know, from my experience and from looking at what I've, what I've wound up with, you know, maintaining this code would be, would be extremely hard for me to introduce bugs when I, when I change it. You know, Solana is a very, very type safe language. Um, you know, there's not going to be, you know, nulls aren't going to creep into my code anymore. Um, you know, uh, the, you know, this app is, you know, it, it's, it's okay. But because it's, you know, kind of basically most of it's, you know, um, sort of pretty, why is my sound off? Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, uh, well, so it plays music, right? <laughs> it really does, I promise. <laughs> if I unplug the screen. Um, so, you know, I mean, I mean, it's pretty cool, the little app, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> how long I spent trying to make it play music. Um, <laughs> no, um, so, you know, overall, but, but most of the app was pretty, you know, kind of pretty me mechanical UI oriented plumbing code, you know, shifting, you know, dealing with, you know, some pretty, you know, I don't know, slightly complex Android APIs. And, you know, so I didn't, I didn't have a chance to really show off, you know, anything about Salon that's really awesome that really made it, you know, the code really, really, really different. Um, but you know, it's still it's clean, it's good. Um, Salon IDE on Android isn't perfect. It does have one huge advantage over other languages on Android, which is the Salon problems view, right? Unlike developing Java on Android, um, if I you know change something, um, so for example here, um, you know, and then you know I switch over the problems view. Then, then Salon will, will, you know, in the background type check the entire project and show me all the errors that I've caused across the entire project. So this doesn't happen in the, in the, in when I'm developing Java on Android. I have to go up and, you know, and explicitly open, you know, this file to see that, to see that that error occurred, okay? That's, that's I mean, that's, that's terrible. Coming from an Eclipse background like I do, you know, I find that just, you know, amazing that, um, that IntelliJ doesn't do that. So. We didn't think that was good for um, uh, for the good enough for the Salon pro plugin. So um, now, where was that change I made? Um, there we go. And you know, if I fix it, then when I then when I go back, um, you know, it just type checks and the project and and everything else going. Um, so that's a big advantage. Um, um, uh, one thing that really annoyed me is that for some reason, you know, the debugger works more or less. I can step over code and, and, and you know, it works more or less. Um, for some reason, setting breakpoints in Salon code didn't work when I ran the code in the, in the Android emulator. That's not normal. I'm not sure if that's something related to Android Studio or if it's something related to Android. I, 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 we need to dig deeper into that. We need to fix that. Um, I did run into a several bugs in, in, in the IDE and, and, um, and one in the compiler, if I'm not mistaken, and, and they're fixed now. And I'm done. Thanks for coming. <laughs>